greetings to you as you join us on today's episode of Tax Matters. How are you coping with the lockdown? We assure you that it is all for good. Fighting this together, we can all stay alive. Remember to follow the basic hygiene advice that is being put out there. The cheapest and most effective being constant washing of hands and some social distancing. God Almighty will keep us all alive. And of course, when all this is over, we are all going to have to pick up the pieces of our businesses and we will thrive, we will make profit, and when we make profit, taxes are due. On this episode of Tax Matters, we want to serve you a few tips on how to operate your business within the ambits of the tax laws and to be a good citizen of our dear country, Nigeria. A few episodes ago, we brought you interviews with members of the management team at the FRS, which centered around the plans, the building blocks of the new FRS, as envisioned by Mr. Mohamed Nami, Executive Chairman FRS, Chairman Joint Trust Board. We want to continue on that trajectory today with a view to bringing taxpayers and Nigerians at large up to speed with regard to the new way of doing things at the FRS. Everything that is being done centers around four pillars. One, rebuilding FRS traditional framework. Two, robust collaboration with stakeholders. Three, building a customer taxpayer-centric institution for data-centric institution. We begin with Mr. Femi Oluwani, Coordinating Director, Tax Operations Group at the FRS. He sheds more light on the implementation of the Finance Act as it affects businesses. Still on the 25 million naira threshold, whereby companies with turnover below 25 million naira will now pay 0% CIT rates. Now, does it mean that they are exempted from filing returns? They are exempted from paying CIT if the turnover is 25 billion naira and below, but they are not exempted from filing the annual returns. As a matter of fact, it is the annual returns that will confirm and justify the fact that uh, they are not supposed to pay uh, the tax at all. And one good thing is that we assess company based on what is called preceding year basis. So that account will have been ready, so there is no excuse that um, it's because there is no way for me to confirm it and so on. It's supposed to have been ready, filed with us, and then that will justify whether he was qualified to uh, not to be taxed or not. So there is a need always when it comes to uh, company income tax for the filing of returns, regardless of that exemption. Okay, sir. And also, does it mean that the exemption from CIT, companies in income tax, means exemption from all taxes? Uh, many people um, have been wondering about that and uh, questions have been coming up in that regard. Other taxes talk of, um, for example, stamp duties, uh, capital gains tax, their basis are different and they have nothing to do with this exemption. Now, let's look at it from the angle of the withholding tax. If a company not liable to company's income tax suffers withholding tax at the point of payment, what happens? I understand what, what you are talking about. A company that's ordinarily not supposed to pay tax at the end of the day has already suffered withholding tax, which in itself is an advance payment of tax. Uh, everybody knows that. And so uh, how do we solve that problem? Um, you see, it could have been easy if we had a, uh, what, I, what I call um, a crystal ball. Permit me to use that word to see those who will not make the 25 million at, at the end of the day. Probably we could have designed a system where they will not even be charged uh, with trading tax. Uh, but since nobody has that, uh, uh, it's not, we are not magicians, and unless at the end of the year, before we know what actually um, your turnover was, uh, and besides that, in order to avoid unnecessary complications to those who should be charging, we now have the headache of, you know, I shouldn't charge from this one, I should charge from that one. Um, unfortunately, the system has to continue like that. They will continue to suffer 
the withholding tax. But having said that, our uh, refund system is very robust. As a matter of fact, it may not even be necessary to ask for a refund. Um, there's a provision for set of, I mean, or for taking off whatever excess any company realizes that it has to take from us to another year, to other years, and everybody is praying that we should grow. That company should grow. It should be in a position that its next uh, set of uh, taxes will be able to accommodate any such excesses. However, if it still insists on collecting its cash back, uh, we have a very robust um, refund system. There's always an amount legislated by the National Assembly in co the custody of the uh, Captain General of the Federation, of course, with inputs from us as a budget that we draw from to pay people. And the, all these things will be factored uh, into the preparation of the budget so that genuine cases, once they are proven, they get their money back. Do you provide goods and services? Then you must answer these important questions. Are you registered for VAT? Do you charge VAT on the goods and services you provide? Do you keep records of all your transactions? Do you file VAT returns? Do you remit VAT collected to government coffers? If your answer to any of these questions is no, then you are breaking the law. The law demands total compliance. Therefore, you must register for VAT. You must charge VAT on goods and services. You must file VAT returns. And you must remit all VAT collected on behalf of government within 21 days to the bank nearest to you. To do otherwise is a crime punishable everywhere in the world. VAT is prescribed by the law. Do the right thing. Collect and pay VAT. This message is from the FIRS. It pays to pay your tax. Companies with turnover below 25 million naira are now exempted from acting as VAT collecting agents and will therefore not need to file monthly VAT returns. Yes. Now, it will be interesting to know what the FIRS is going to do to improve the figure of VAT filers going forward. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that, that has always been the challenge and uh, this new, the new administration of uh, the administration of the new executive chairman uh, uh, Mohammed uh, Nami is really focusing in that area uh, that is what I call uh, the tax base to, to increase it. Those who have not been registering were supposed to register, those who registered have not been filing. Uh, there are a lot of things that uh, the management is now doing in that regard. Um, a lot of it is uh, bordering on technology, technology that will help us to, uh, by way of intelligence, to pull uh, information from third parties. Now, uh, by God's grace, we are uh, developing a very robust system that will integrate with uh, the customs, for example, uh, customs, in fact, we have already integrated with customs and to share information a lot. So if you are importing and uh, you come around to say that you are not uh, doing any business, of course, that's obvious that uh, there's something fishy there. If you, are, um, if you are importing and you are importing in billions and you are saying even your top is not up to 25 million naira, there's an issue there. Um, we are also... Um, there is something that we have now <coughs> with the banks. Uh, we have a solution that is called my bank uh, statement, uh, so to say, uh, whereby we can connect to, of course, with some restrictions and some regulations, uh, connect into the bank statements of uh, customers. And with the volume of transactions that is going on, we can have, have an idea. It may not be very conclusive, but we can have an idea of what level of business you are doing. And <coughs> if you are supposed to be filing, you are not filing, that will uh, fish you out. Uh, there is what is called value chain. Big companies, especially the oil majors, you know, there are a lot of people that depend on them. They are contractors and so on and so forth. Uh, they supply us with information of all those that we can use to cross-reference whatever you are filing with us. And so many other things that uh, in the pipeline, yes, in the, uh, initiatives that have either been ruled out or about to be ruled out. More importantly, we 
uh, especially with this issue of um, exemption of 25 million and below, management is seriously thinking of expanding our, our uh, offices, I mean increasing, such that there will be a group of people in each locality that now we focus on that band. You know, maybe we'll call them micro and remove the small now. They will focus on those cases that are not supposed to be paying anything uh, in order to see how they can um, validate whatever they are claiming, bring up those who are supposed to be filing, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, we are doing those things, and very soon the results will be very obvious. Thank you for staying with us. Still on the Finance Act and still on VAT, threshold and all that. Mr. Davo Pam is the Director of Collection at the FRS. There seems to be some misunderstanding on the part of the public with regards to the VAT threshold provision in the Finance Act, whereby some have conceived this to mean that those companies below the, the threshold of 25 million naira and above, that they are exempted from paying VAT. Could you please educate our viewers more on this? No taxpayer or no company is exempted in the first place. Today, outside the in the market there, anybody can be a consumer. And by the law, value added tax is a consumption tax. So everyone that consumes also pay tax. That in the speech of the executive chairman FRS, he, on assumption of duty, he promised a repositioning of collection reporting accounting. Yeah. So what and what are being put in place to achieve this goal? The chairman has made a lot of promises and uh, we believe that the part of the structures that he wants to bring in place would be technology. Only technology could come certain payments. It is only technology that could come, come these things directly to our federation account without any hitch and it will do so with accuracy. So um, he has also solicited that uh, stakeholders, we have with us um, government who deducts access and remit. We are still using certain softwares that the GIF missed and the SWIFT missed and the remitter and things like that. So we want to deploy more technology into the system. Yes. And it is this technology, you remember that technology is much more accurate than human beings. It will deduct these things instantly and remit without any hitch. So, and we also are aware that there are some companies that have advanced. They do their activities. Most of them are computerized. We also need this technology so that we can catch up with this the taxes that are involved in such transactions. Yes. Fine, technology is the way to go. Yes. And he also promised a repositioning of large and medium taxpayer process. Yes. So what is in the offing? Well, uh, that has been carried out already. Um, it is a structure that was in existence uh, preceding four years ago. And so he has, you know, resuscitated, I mean, he has resuscitated it back and we are glad that that will be better because um, you know that uh, we have numerous small companies and um, the attention of multinationals should be given to them in accordance with what we expect from them and grouping them in one place will not work and uh, we also looked at the fact that yes um, before now you will discover that someone will have to travel far away, more than 500 kilometers, to get things done. So, but with this adjustment that we have now, uh, we believe that the medium tax office and the large tax offices will be able to work amicably and give the best of service professionally to the bigger ones. And uh, the smaller ones will be taken care of too we will take care of them in a more efficient way because number one, most of the big ones have been taken somewhere and then the tax 
controllers will now be comfortable to face the other ones comfortably. For more than a decade now, the federal government has been implementing a scheme to get all taxable persons and corporates to register and obtain things. The efforts reached a crescendo on the 1st of July 2019 when the JTB team registration system and consolidated national tax database was launched. Malam N. L. Abubakar is the Executive Secretary of Joint Tax Board. We recall that the goal set at the early stage was for 40 million registrants into the, ta into the database, uh, which will be accomplished by the end of 2019. So how far will this go, with this target? Yes, the taxpayer identification uh, number uh, is, is, is a scheme that uh, came uh, since that has been uh, embarked upon by federal government since uh, 2009. And the essence is to create a, a, a database for all categories of taxpayers uh, because you cannot administer taxes when you don't have information or record adequately in regards to the persons, other individuals or entities. So um, the taxpayer education number uh, scheme is to provide that uh, platform where uh, both tax authority, the federal and state, will have information at a, very, at a common platform about all the taxpayers. About, uh, so, um, uh, from the beginning, it, it was a system was put in place where persons were expected to go to the task offices to register. But uh, knowing the culture of, uh, of uh, uh, knowing the tax uh, co culture in this country, it wasn't uh, very fast, and um, it was taught that we leverage on some uh, information available uh, at various uh, uh, agencies. Yeah, so, for example, the Nigerian Interbank Settlement System NIBS that captured uh, the bank uh, verification number for uh, bank customers, you know, with the commercial banks. The, they have registered close to 40 million uh, individuals, and those records uh, clearly match the record too that we need in respect of uh, individual taxpayers that are to be registered. For example, the uh, biometric, 10 finger biometrics that are captured during the uh, BVN registration are also uh, captured when you come to, uh, to get a taxpayer application number. So we thought that uh, to avoid replication, we could just approach these agencies, uh, get the record transferred to us, and what will be expected is that we assign team in bulk to all the record that are transferred to us. That is uh, uh, one entity. The second aspect is the, uh, the National Identity Management Commission that issues national identification number to citizens of the country. They have also recorded close to 40 million. So, but you know that uh, the record of NIMS and NIMSI will actually, uh, uh, in, uh, you, you've seen some interception where uh, individuals that have, that have been, that have BVN also have uh, the national, uh, national identification number and, of, and there won't be duplication as far as a tax ID is concerned. Uh, if you are a, a, a marker, is it? Yeah. You are a marker with uh, BVN. If at, uh, NIM, at NIMSI, we see you as a marker. So uh, we will not take that to mean two records. We will take it as one record and one taxpayer in our database. So, uh, so far, that's where we are, and very soon we, uh, we've concluded arrangement to get those records transferred to us. And that will now mean that uh, about uh, 40 uh, million individuals resident across the country will have team assigned to them. On corporate entities, 
we've also gone far in, a, in, in arrangement with Corporate Affairs Commission. So, and, and that actually, we don't have uh, any problem because as soon as companies are registered and they are issued with the RC number, the, uh, the information are uh, immediately transferred to us and seen as assigned. We have even mandated them to uh, issue team because we have a, a, a very strong collaboration with them uh, that the system are connected uh, immediately team can be issued and record comes to us immediately still on the consolidated taxpayer database what steps are being taken to get more of the corporate taxpayers in the register of the CAC to file tax returns and pay? Well, registration will continue. We've already set in place for a long time. We are working hand in groups with um, uh, CAC, uh, Corporate Affairs Commission, and instantly when a taxpayer registers, we also uh, assign uh, tax identification number to him. Well, we don't know. By the time he commenced business, we, he has already had, you know, a tax identification number. And you know, today, without that, uh, you cannot even access or open a new a bank account. So, for a lot of things that are being done today, it is with this uh, tax identification number that has to be done. So, uh, we right from the source, we register. But for those who are not or rather those who have been registered for long and uh, have not had a TIN number, I mean tax identification number. Now, of course, we'll, uh, through monitoring and other you know, criteria that we intend to work out, we will fish them out and then assign TIN number to you know, uh, increase the tax net. We are also using third party information to fish out those ones that are not registered with us. Remember, when you buy things from a company, the company keeps records. If we tumble on this one, we rank it up and see whether this one has been registered or not. If he hasn't, we immediately register him and compel him and follow up until we bring him back to the tax net. So these are some of the things that we are putting in place and we believe that in uh, no distant future, uh, the benefits will come. And like I said, even those ones that are granted exemption, through third party information, you will discover that we'll still bring them back. The Federal Inland Revenue Service FIRS calls on all corporate organizations operating in Nigeria to register for the purpose of payment of taxes and obtain a tax identification number TIN. All registered companies must obtain a tax identification number immediately from the nearest FIRS office. You can also collect and return tax registration forms from the Federal Inland Revenue Service Engagement and Enlightenment Tax Team's feet on compliance checks exercise in your area. A company which is yet to commence business after at least six months of incorporation must pay a pre-operational levy of 20,000 Naira in the first year and 25,000 Naira for subsequent years to obtain its tax clearance certificate TCC. Note that filing and payment of VAT and withholding tax returns must be done on or before the 21st day of every month. Register for VAT. File all tax returns as and at when due. Be a responsible corporate citizen of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. Thank you for watching. But please stay safe. Wash your hands frequently and observe the health advisories. See you next week.